In lesson 7 we'll be discussing multiplication and division of decimal numbers and then working with rounding numbers to estimate some answers before we work them out. First let's talk about multiplying decimal numbers and I'm going to assume that you know how to do this you just may need to review it a little bit. Remember what you do on these is order doesn't matter in multiplication but what you do is get rid of all of your decimal places and then you add them back in at the end. For example, look at 20.16. You have 1, 2. You'd have to move it over to the right 2 to get rid of all the decimal places. 3.825, you'd move it over 1, 2, 3. And the reason you do this is because you want to just work with whole numbers. It's a little bit easier to think about whole numbers instead of decimal numbers. And we'll write this 2016388. Two, five, and do multiplication here. And we remember that we have five decimal places all together that we will add back in when we're done. And really what we've done is we've multiplied by powers of 10 or values of 10. That moves the decimal place over because each decimal place or each place value is 10 from the other one, a multiple of 10 from the other one. We have whole numbers now. Let's go ahead and do our multiplication. 6 times 5 is 30. And 5 times 1 is 5 plus 3 is 8. Then we'll have 5 times 0. Then we'll have 5 times 2 is 10. Now we go to the tens place. 2 times 6 is 12. Carry a 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. Then 2 times 0 and 2 times 2 is 4. Then we go to the 8 which is in the hundreds place. We have 8 times 6 is 48 and we'll bring a 4 up here. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 12. Carry a 1. 8 times 0 is 0 plus 1 would be 1 and then 8 times 2 is 16. Then lastly we have the 3. 3 times 6 is 8 we carry a 1, got all kinds of little numbers up there, we just kind of have to keep up with which one's which, and we do 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4, then 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 2 is 6. Now we add all these together, 0, 8 and 2 is 0, carry 1, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, carry 1, 2, 3, plus 8 is 11, and 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 4 is 6, 7 plus 4 is 11, carry 1, 7, and 7. Now move the decimal places back in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we end up with 77.112. We don't need to put the zeros on the end there, we can just say 77.112. And that is our product for that problem. So don't forget that on multiplication. You count up the total number of decimal places that you have. Move them out. Do your multiplication just with dealing with whole numbers. Then you add them back in at the end. In reality, what you did there is that 20.16, you multiplied that by 100 to move the two decimal places over. You just don't show that. You multiplied 3.825 by 1,000 and that gives you 3,825, a whole number, and you work with those. So you really ended up multiplying by 100 times 1,000 or 100,000. That's five tens, 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That gives you 100,000. Then you divide back through by 100,000 to get your correct answer with the correct decimal places. Let's go ahead and do a division now, division of decimal numbers, and we have this problem here to do. 0.21 divided by 0 0.048. And so what we do is we write that out in our normal long division format. We put the divisor on the outside and the dividend on the inside. 0.21, or we could say 0.21, it doesn't really matter. Now, what we do here is a similar idea in 
like in multiplication of decimal numbers. We want to get rid of our decimal values. And here we only consider getting rid of the decimal value in the divisor. We don't really worry about the dividend because it really doesn't affect it that much. So what we would do here is multiply by a thousand. We'd go one, two, three. We have to multiply the dividend by a thousand as well. And we would go one, two, three. And so we need another zero right there. Let's just go ahead and rewrite this division problem now. 48 and 210 point. I'll put the decimal place right there. Now let's think about it. 48 wouldn't go into 21, but it would go into 210. And this is a time we could estimate. We could just kind of round up to 50. 50 would go into 200 four times. So 48 would go into 210 four times at least. And so let's just do that multiplication. 48 times 4. 8 times 4 is 2. Carry 3. 4 times 4 is 16. 19. 192. So we can say 48 goes into 210 four times. Because 48 times 5 would be too big. And subtract these two from each other. And we would end up with an 8 here, a 1 here. 18 is what we would end up with. Then we can go ahead and put some zeros in. Zero means nothing, so it doesn't matter if we put 6 or 10 or 200 zeros on there. They just represent nothing, but it helps us to know what to put or what to carry down. And we need to bring down a zero. And now we have 180. We think 48 goes into 180 how many times? Well, again, we could think of 48, estimate it as 50. 50 would go into 180 three times because 50 times 3 is 180. We know 48 times 4 already is 192, and we know that's too high. So we will do a 3 here, and we need to put a decimal point right there, and a 3. 48 times 3 is 144. And we do the subtraction here. We would get 10 minus 4 is 6. 7 minus 4 is 3. 36, and bring down a 0. Now we need to think 48 goes into 360 how many times? Now when you're trying to figure out this part of a division problem, I don't think it's a bad thing to use a calculator. Instead of having to write out, well, 48 times 4, what is 48 times 5, what is 48 times 6? You could use a calculator or you could estimate 50. Think of 50. 50 would go into 360 seven times, right? Because 50 times 7 is 350. 50 times 8 is 400. That would be too much. So just do 48 times 7 on your calculator real quick and see what that is. Unless you can do that in your head really fast. That equals 336. And so we'll say 48 goes into seven or 360 seven times. That's 336. And subtract these. 10 minus 6 is 4. You can make that a 5. We'll end up with 2, 4, 0. Now think about this. 48, well what 50 would go into 240 four times because 50 times 5 is 250. Well let's just think about it. 48 times 5, what is that equal to? And that is exactly 240. So we'd, we'd stop there and 4.375 would be the answer. Now remember in division of decimal numbers, you don't have to go back and add the zeros back in. This is our exact answer. Think about why. We're dividing here and we moved both values. We moved the decimal place over the same amount in each. So let's just say we had something simple like 6 divided by 2. That's the same thing as 60 over 20 or 6,000 over 2,000. Any multiple of 10 like that, we could multiply both of them, the numerator and the denominator, by the same thing. All of those still equal 3. 
So that's why we don't have to worry about moving the decimal place back. We move the decimal place over the same amount in the dividend and the divisor. We still get the same value for our answer. In multiplication, we had different amounts that we moved that decimal over. So we add that total back in. We move it back over that total amount. Let's do one more division problem and what I want you to do on this one is just round the value to two decimal places. And so we know in rounding we need to know at least that value we're rounding to plus one more place after it. So let's just get our division problem to three decimal places and then we'll know whether to round up or leave that value the same. So I'll just put a little note up there, round to two DP or decimal places to remind us what we're doing. So we put the divisor on the outside and the dividend on the inside and we think 9 goes into 48 how many times? Well 9 times 5 is 45 and so we'll end up with a 3 here we need to put a decimal point down and put nothing after it or zeros after it so we can have something to write to bring down and so now we can say 9 goes into 30 how many times? Well, that would be 3. Put a point in our quotient here. 5.3. 9 times 3 is 27. Subtract. We get 30 again. And so it'll go into that 30 times. Subtract. We get 30 again. And remember we said we need at least three decimal places. Now we know what to do. We circle that second decimal place. Put an arrow over the next one. That one is less than 5, so that means we leave the 3 alone and rounding to two decimal places we would say that that quotient is 5.33. The last part of this lesson is on estimation and what they're wanting you to do here is estimate the result to a multiplication problem before you do it. And I also talked about estimation when we were doing division problems as well and sometimes that helps you know what parts of your quotient you will need. One reason you estimate, the main reason you estimate is that you can work with numbers that you're more familiar with and they're easier to multiply or divide. It helps you get an idea of what you should do next. It may also help you get an idea of whether or not your answer is correct as well to a problem. For example, look at practice problem D. I want you to estimate an answer to that and then figure out the exact value of it. So estimating that, we could just round that 2.88 up to a number we're familiar with, like a 3. And the 31.3, we could just make that a 30. And so we're really just doing 3 times 30. And that's really easy. That's just 90. So that's an estimate of that answer. Now let's go ahead and perform the actual multiplication and see what our answer is and that estimate will help us know if our answer is correct or not. And we'll do 288 and 313. Now we've moved the decimal or we have three decimal places to consider there, right? Two in the 2.88, one in the 31.3. We'll add those three back in when we're finished. 3 times 8, that's equal to 24. Bring a 2 up. 3 times 8 again is 24, plus 2 is 26. Bring a 2 over there. 2 times 3, that's equal to 6, plus 2 is 8. And then the next one is just 1 times 288, so we'll have 8, 8, and 2. And then 3 again by 288, we just need to put it in the right spot, starting in the hundreds place, and we would have a 4, a 6, and an 8. Now, kind of running out of room there, so let's add over to the right side here, and we'll have 4, and then 6 and 8 is 14, carry a 1, and we'd have 9 plus 8 is 17, plus 4 is 21, carry a 2, and we'd have a 10 in that column, everything added up, 1 plus 8 is 9. Bring the decimal place back over 3. 90.144. And so our estimate was 90. Our answer is 90.144. That gives us confidence that we did that problem correctly. And we could also do the problem on our calculator to check our work. 
there is a time and a place for a calculator. Right now in Algebra Half, the time to use them is to check your work on a problem like this or when you're working geometry problems where the purpose is not to know if you can do a big long multiplication or division problem, but whether you can apply the formulas you use in those geometry problems to get a correct answer. Okay, well that's all for Lesson 7.